But change the name, change the game. That's the title of this message in this series. And if you guys were here last week, Pastor Chad talked about um, one of the names in the Bible that were changed was Saul. Saul was a persecutor of Christians. He, uh, he imprisoned Christians. He, uh, he was there for executions of Christians. And God and um, Saul had an encounter. And uh, that encounter changed his entire life. And with Saul, who is now Paul, you know, Paul's name wasn't changed until a little bit later after his encounter. But as soon as his name was changed from Saul to Paul, his encounter began right then. And he began to walk in the authority that God gave him. And so tonight we're going to be looking at another uh, guy in the Bible whose name was Simon. And a lot of you guys might have heard of this guy. His name's Simon. And he's also referred to as Simon Peter because, yes, his name was changed from Simon to Peter by Jesus. Simon was one of the disciples of Jesus. And so tonight we're going to be looking at that. But here's the difference between Paul and Peter. Paul's change was immediate, while Peter's change was a process. I love that because I feel like that's my life. That, that just sums up my life in just one word, process. And uh, when Jesus called and changed uh, Simon's name to Peter, he was still referred to throughout the New Testament as Simon Peter. Because he wasn't Simon anymore because God had already called him to a new name. But he wasn't quite Peter until he got there. And so for so long he was Simon Peter. He was, he was in the middle. He was in the process. Can you imagine being told your purpose in life? If I knew what your purpose in life was and I was to tell you your purpose, but you couldn't live up to that purpose because of where you are in your life or because of where you're not in your life, how defeating would that be? How, how defeating would it be to know what your plan is, what your future looks like, but you can't do anything about that without going through a process? That's exactly what Peter had to experience. God called Peter, and I don't know if you guys know this, but the word Peter actually means the rock. And we'll talk about that in a bit. But uh, yeah, so Peter had to go through a process. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Anyone who belongs to Christ, he has become a new person. The old life has gone and the new life has begun. Now, I can tell you from experience, when I started to follow Jesus, when I committed my life to Christ, can I tell you that I didn't feel like the old life really went away too far? And I sure didn't feel like the, a new life had begun. I kind of felt like I was still in the middle, where I was trying to discover who I was in Christ, and yet not wanting to go back to who I was, because I know who I was called to be. And so I found myself constantly trying to, I was struggling between who I used to be and who God called me to be. And I found myself in this merging process. Have you guys ever taken the freeway? Of course you have. And you know when you get off the freeway, you merge onto an on-ramp or an off-ramp and then you get on the street that you want? How many of you guys know that that's life sometimes? That you, are, you, are, you might be on the wrong freeway going the wrong way and then God calls you to make a drastic change in your life and it's the merge that you're on and you're waiting to get to where God has called you to be and yet you're just merging. You're not quite there yet. You haven't got off completely but you're not going in the wrong direction anymore. Man, I, I can't tell you how I felt to know that God has called me to be who I am today and I'm still here today, not fully who God has called me to be. Because I'm still in the merge process. I'm still, I'm still walking in who God has called me to be. I don't know if, if any of you guys can relate or you uh, understand how that feels. It's a lifelong process. You're always going to be merging. You're always going to be discovering. You're always going to be seeking. You're always going to be searching for who God has called you to be. And the only time you're really going to figure that out and find it is when you're standing before the Lord. It might just be a process. I can promise you this, though. I can promise you when God calls you to something new, when God calls you to something new, it's a game changer. It's a game changer. 
Change the name, change the game. When God is calling you out of something old and bringing you into something new, it changes everything in your life. In John chapter 1, verse 42, it says, Jesus looked at him and said, this is Jesus talking to, to Simon. He said, you are Simon, son of John, but now you will be called Cepheus, which means Peter. The definition for Cepheus in the Greek and the Aramaic language means the rock. God is calling Peter, from Simon to Peter, he's saying, you are the rock. Simon was anything but the rock. In fact, he was insecure, he was unpredictable, and he was unstable. If you know anything about Peter, he was one of the wildest disciples that Jesus had on his crew. He was the craziest guy out of the 12. He was, he was unpredictable. What is Peter going to do? What's Peter going to say? And he was so bold in his craziness. He was so bold in his unpredictability. And sometimes that was great, and sometimes that was not so great. But it didn't matter because that was who he was. And Jesus still called him, even though he was a little unstable. So why would Jesus call him the rock when his life was the complete opposite of what something solid looks like? And this is why. Because Jesus saw and sees so much more in Peter than Peter saw in Peter. Jesus saw the potential in Peter when Peter didn't even see the potential in Peter. Let me tell you that Jesus always sees so much more in you and I than so often we see in ourselves. That's the eye of the Father. Man, when God calls you to something new, it's because he sees something incredible in your life. And we have to trust him. As a dad, I always see the greatest potential in my kids way before they do. I know that they're going to be great in what they do because as a father and as an encourager, I encourage them to continue. I, can, I encourage them not to give up. I encourage them when they're down and when they're discouraged. I say, hey, you can do it. You guys, <laughs> you come from my lineage, man. You can do anything. But I, but I, I see the greatest potential in my kids. Why? Because I'm, I'm the dad. And there's nothing like father filters. There's nothing like the eyes of a dad. And that's what God sees when he sees you. He sees you as his children. And I know last week, uh, Pastor Chad talked about some of, the, some of the new names that you've been called. From all the old names, from some of the bad names, some of the labels that have been put on you, to the new ones, new creation, masterpiece, child of God. You are the light in this world because of who lives in you. You have a new name. Imagine a God who sees everything and knows everything and still speaks that over you. He knows where you're going, what you're seeing, who you're hanging out with, where you're going to be later. He sees, he sees everything about you and he still speaks life. He still speaks positivity. He still speaks, you know, just love. He loves you as a father. No matter what this looks like, maybe what you think you look like on the outside, he sees your greatest potential. Sometimes when I see people, I often see, and, and this is something that I've always worked on, I've always been working on, but sometimes when I see someone, I, I automatically think I know everything about them by, by what I see. Any of you guys do that? Any of you guys see a person, first, first impression, you're like, I know the guy's whole life story. And you, and you judge that person by their appearance, by the way they stand, you know, the, by the way they walk. You know, oh, I know, I know everything about that person. We got we to gotta fight against that we got to fight against that because that's wrong can you imagine if God drew his conclusion by looking at your appearance or looking at where you're at in life right now and, and, and saying oh I know, every, I know everything about that person because of the way they where they're at right now in life oh but he doesn't Jesus sees us for who he's called us to be not where we're at right now Amen? That is good news because where I'm at right now isn't where I want to be, but it's not where I was yesterday. And that's what our progress has to be. We got to constantly be growing. We got to constantly be learning. Don't be who you were yesterday, but don't be, don't stay who you are today. Okay? Gotta, you got to walk in the call of God. 
Simon was a fisherman who was uneducated and unrefined. And Jesus still called him to follow him. He'll call any of us. If he can call someone who knows nothing about the faith. He was a fisherman. He was, a, he was just a brute. You know, back then, fishermen, they were just uneducated. They were, they were just kind of just the gross, like the sailors of the day, man. The, the language was just horrible. And you know what? It didn't bother God at all. It didn't bother him at all. He says, I, I, I still want you. I want you. I want you to follow me. What made the game change for Peter? What made the game change? He knew who Jesus was. That changes the game. You guys, when you know who Jesus is, when you know and you can trust who Jesus calls you to be, it changes everything. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 15 through 18, Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? He's talking to all of his disciples. You know who speaks up? The first one to always speak up was Simon Peter. Simon answered, you are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. I mean, he's like, oh, I know who you are. He was excited. I mean, a lot of times he spoke up and he was wrong. And Jesus is like, that's okay, buddy. I still love you. But he got it right this time. He says, you are the Messiah, the living God, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of John, for this was not revealed to you by the flesh and blood, but by the Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are now Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. You guys, I want you to, I want you to see something here. Because it says, Jesus has already called him Peter. He's already changed his name. And it says, Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah. You know what, Jesus, I don't know, this, I read this a million times, and I, and I just got this, actually, right now when I, read, when I started reading it. Simon Peter is who answered, and Jesus says, you are Peter. You know what's so good about God? He will remind you of who you are. You know, when your friends or your, your peers want to remind you of who you once were, Jesus will constantly remind you of who you are now okay he will always remind you of who you are with conviction Peter said you are the son of the living God I find it interesting though that Peter knew exactly who Jesus was but yet still lacked the knowledge of who he was but here's the deal the more you get to know God the more you will understand who you are in him in Romans 10, verses, uh, uh, chapter 10, verse 9, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Salvation doesn't come from your identity. It comes from who Jesus is. And that's one thing that Peter knew. Peter knew who Jesus was. And I'm telling you, when you know who Christ is, it's the game changer. It changes everything. When you read about Peter, when you open up this book and you just start like, he's through the Gospels, right? When you start reading about Peter, one of the things you're going to find out is he was a man who followed Jesus with all of his heart. He was a man who walked on water, which Jesus called Peter to walk on water. I don't know who else has done that since. Peter was the only one that I know of that walked on water with Jesus. He was also the one who preached with Jesus. He went on all of his, all of his journeys, all of his, you know, outreaches, and he preached side by side with Jesus. Peter was the one of, of a lot of the disciples who were with Jesus when he fed the 5,000. He got to see miracles with Jesus. He was also the one who stood up for Jesus when no one else would stand up for Jesus because he was just a brute. He didn't care. If you stood against Jesus, he would make sure that you would never do it again. But you also, when you read about this man of God, Peter, the same man who stood up for God, we read about how he rebuked Jesus. We, we read about how he, he denied Jesus three times when he was going to the cross. We, we read about how, how Peter lost his faith 
time and time again. Yeah, we talk about him walking on water, but we, 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 we rarely talk about him sinking. I don't know. I didn't count. I didn't go through the Bible and count how many times Jesus had to say to Peter, Peter, why do you have such little faith? But yet he's called Peter. He's called a rock in which God was going to build his church on. An unstable person. God has so much faith in us. He has so much faith in us because of who we are in him. One thing that we see in Peter is that he went through a process from who he was to who God called him to be. That's the same process that we're in today. That's the same process that you're going through. You're not finished. I don't know if you've ever woke up and said, well, this is as good as it's ever going to be. You are not a finished product. You are walking through the process of who God has called you to be. Don't quit. Don't give up. You know, you know who's compared to, to Peter? Judas. You know Judas betrayed Jesus for, for 30 pieces of silver? And then after he did that, he, tried to, he felt so convicted, he felt so bad, he went to try to return the, the money to the, to the people that took Christ to hang him on the cross. And they said, get out of here. Too late, sucker. And you know what he did? He went and killed himself. You know the difference between Peter and Judas? Peter repented. Peter repented. Peter denied. He betrayed Jesus and was filled with the same remorse and the same conviction as Judas. And he went to Jesus and repented. And Jesus still says, your name is still Peter. You are still the one I'm calling to build my house on. You're going to be the rock. The more we know the one who's changed our name, the more we learn to trust in him, leading us to walk in that calling. The more you, you get to know who Jesus is, the more secure you are in walking in who you are. Not having to pretend, not having to go back and revert to who you once were, but you walk in the truth and you walk in, in faith and righteousness because of, of who, your, who your dad is. Finishing the scripture in Matthew 16, we're going to go to 21 through 23, and I, and I know I got just two minutes, and I'm going to finish it up, I promise. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must... Go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, of the chiefs, priests, the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and then on the third day be raised again. Peter, he's Peter now. He's not Simon Peter. He is, he's understanding who he is. Peter took him aside, took Jesus aside after Jesus says, I have, to, I have to be arrested. I have to go on the cross. I have to die so I can be raised again on the third day. Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke Jesus. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. I won't let it. I will. I will. I'll cut the ear off somebody. It happens. Okay. It'll never happen. Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have the mind and concern of God, but merely the human concern. That poor guy. He's trying so hard to do what he thinks is right. He goes from being called the rock in which God will build his church to in the same paragraph, Jesus calls him Satan and a stumbling block. There are going to be highs, guys in your life where you feel like you are the rock. You are who God has called you to be. You are, you are everything. You, are, you have a perfect day. I've not sinned at all today. I'm doing good. I'm doing what God has called me to do. And then you're going to have days where you feel like you're a stumbling block. There's highs and lows in our life. You know why? Because we're going through a process. There's a process. We all have them. Peter knew who Jesus was. Therefore, Peter started to learn who he was. My encouragement to you guys tonight is to learn who Jesus is so that you know your identity. Because 
our identity is in Christ. Our identity isn't from who your friends have called you, from what your parents have labeled you, from what your teachers have put on you, from what your coaches have, have said about you, from what your bosses have spoken over you. Your identity is in who Christ has called you. Right? So, know who Jesus is so that you can know who you are. Will you bow your heads?